What's going on? Nothing. It's NBA season now, so I'm watching the Celtics next game in the background. Who's winning? It's uh, 45-34. Boston shooting like lights out right now. I think they're shooting like 68% from the field in the first half. So, but it was good to see uh, the gardens. It's packed. So it's good to see fans in full capacity and stands again. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. I was watching. I, I watched the uh, Lakers game yesterday, and yeah, yeah, the Warriors look good. The Lakers look like crap still. Is that your team? Who's your who do you like in basketball? No, I'm a Knicks fan. Okay. All right. Well, sorry to sorry to bring that up then. That's all right. <laughs> I, I like we've talked about before. It's never a really uh, a good. Are you are you New York through and through in all your sports fandom? Uh, I know you like Florida State in college. Yeah, because there's not really any good college teams in uh, no arc. So, but um, yeah, uh, Rangers, Yankees, Knicks, and Giants. All right, all right, not bad. Well, I mean, <laughs> the <laughs> relative term there. <laughs> it depends on the year. Not bad. <laughs> Uh, what's uh, what's something good you watch this week? Um, I watched the Chris the um, Dave Chappelle uh, special that everybody's been talking about. Everyone has been talking about this. I still haven't got there yet. Um, how, how is it? It's good, and I, I think people need to watch it to really understand that it's. I, I don't think it's as bad as people are trying to make it out to be, but um, I won't go too far in that because we don't want to be that kind of show. Uh, but it was very good. Um, All right. Also started rewatching some uh, uh, Marvel movies. I, I started with Endgame. Endgame is what it's all about. It's one of my favorite movies in the DC, in DC, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. So and it always just you know gets you. I did. Uh, well, I'm sure you know. I did a full rewatch last year. Okay. Like around around February, I started and I started with Iron Man, and then I went through I think twenty twenty three movies in like three months. And when I got to Endgame, it's still just fucking electric. Yeah, and it's gonna hold up for a long time. That movie. Yeah, yeah, really good. Have you have you seen uh, the newer movies yet, like uh, Black Widow or Shang Chi? Uh, I saw Black Widow. I haven't seen Shang Chi yet. Really good. Which I'm really disappointed in because. Uh, I heard it was really good. Yeah, we saw it in Dolby in a theater opening night, and it was a packed theater, and it was just it was electric. Like some of the fight scenes were just were really good, and it, the the future of the MCU looks really bright. Well, I, I think we talked about it on a previous episode, and uh, I really am actually starting to get excited for the Marvels now, uh, the Eternals. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's like two weeks from now, I think. Yeah. So I'm, I'll, de- I'll definitely be there opening weekend. Uh, what about you? Anything good you watch this week? So I saw uh, in theaters, I saw The Last Duel. How was that? Uh, fucking great. Um, so just for anyone listening, that's the new Ridley Scott movie. It's like a medieval times. It says based on a true story. I don't know if it's that's loose or it actually is based on a true story, but it's Ridley Scott film with Jodie Comer, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Adam Driver. So the the premise is just for I'll I'll just put this out there. There is a rape in this movie. So some people that would that's a automatic red flag. I'm not watching this movie, but there is a, there is a rape scene in this movie. And how they work it is they tell the story three times through different characters perspectives. So you get like Matt Damon's version of events in one scene and then you get uh, Adam Driver's version of events and Jody Comer's version of events. And it's just, you have to kind of determine who's telling the truth. And then they, at the end, they slap you with, like, this is what really happened. So it's kind of cool seeing different perspectives. And then the end scene, there's there's a battle. There is a duel in this movie. It's called The Last Duel for a reason. So we have, a like, a, a battle scene between Adam Driver's character and Matt Damon's character. And this is from Ridley Scott, the the man who directed Gladiator. So let me, it was up, it was on par with most of the battle scenes in Gladiator. I would. I'm dying to see this movie because I'm. I'm. I've done watched a lot of Adam Driver's work lately, and it's he's lights out. He no, really, he's great. 
And it's, it's an interesting dynamic because you have um, Adam Driver and Jodie Comer, who were two of the like hottest up and coming actors. And you just throw them in the ring with Damon and Affleck, who are, you know, two of the biggest stars in the world. And it was, it was a really good, really good movie. I enjoyed it. I recommend going to see it. He really turned his career around Affleck, like from one of the movies that he was doing. Once he did Argo in the town, it's it's been lights out with him, too. Yes, solid, solid. I mean, just a talented guy all around. You can the movies he directed. You just cited two of two of the films he directed. Just really good. Enjoy everything he's he's been in. Maybe not Geely, but <laughs> well, that's why I said after Town <laughs> and Argo. But he definitely has more uh, home runs and RBIs than strikeouts for oh, his definitely. career. Definitely, <laughs> especially in his later in his career. Yeah, absolutely, and. Um, Got it. Got a site. Uh, Succession. What did you watch the season premiere? I haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet. How good was it? Oh, dude. And yeah, I know I might ride too hard for the show, but it's it's the best series on TV right now. And this episode did nothing to deter my opinion on that. The, it's di- just, the dynamic in that show is off the charts. It's just. Yeah, and I think we've talked about this before, how we do like a best quote section for each episode of Sopranos that we talk about. Yes. If we we went back to the succession and did a succession podcast and just let we be doing quotes for like an hour an episode. It's just like it's just like every episode is just a series of like insults that are hilarious. It's so good. So yeah, if anyone's not watching Succession who's listening to this, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you yeah. should get on that one all right so cool let's uh let's get into this what uh what episode are we doing today nobody knows anything all right so we're we're off and running now it seems we've i think we've ended our last i called them i was like looking at the episode list for season one and i was like the last one i think was our last anthology episode for a while yeah. i was just calling them anthology because they don't contribute to the story too much <laughs> A good term for it, but now, now we're 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 moving. Foots on the gas here. Um, just just a lot happens in this episode, even though it's it's kind of like a setup episode for the next two. We're we're two episodes left in season one, but it, we're we're getting rolling here. Yeah, this is the episode. This is like uh, the episode that shit starts going sideways very fast and propels the show for the rest of the season right so we we'll just i have i have scenes here but we could just talk about some of the things that happened briefly uh mckazian tells tony that pussy is wearing a wire oh so that that's a big thing um we get we get mckazian suicide later in the episode that's just that's like one of the things that happens here we get the scene between um Livia and Junior, which is a, another powerful scene and sets up the basically the scene that sets up the the next two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, we end up I think the end scene in this is uh, Mikey and we're introduced to a new character who we're probably not going to be Chucky. And we see that there, there is a hit. Junior, by the end of this episode, is putting a hit out on his own nephew. Just just really good and we see kind of we see like how sensitive junior is and we're going to keep continue to see that as as we go on but just the the things that lead him to put a hit out on it on his he, father his brother's child is he's just definitely very petty and you see yeah. that more and more yeah yeah so it maybe in hindsight it was it wasn't the best decision for tony to put him in charge even though probably didn't have much choice at that point but yeah not not the not his best decision yeah not not the guy you want leading the ship so yeah uh let me think anything what stood out about this episode most for you for this episode basically the um the scene that was really big was when tony realized he made a mistake that he okay. Arcasian made a mistake with the person because there was an arrest in this in the beginning of the of the episode, um, in uh, what's his name's pool hall, uh, Jimmy's pool hall. Yep. 
So, and then you, you see it later on. Jimmy's finally gets out and he comes to see Tony. I have this in my scenes. Yeah, this is this is a big scene. And uh, the like Tony putting everything together and he it's really smart. And that's actually you'll figure it out why he's so smart later on in season, I believe it's season five. But uh at the last episode, the season finale. Yeah. He puts it together so quickly with the questions that Jimmy's asking him. Right. Like, they made a mistake on who the rat was. Yes. Yeah. So we'll definitely expand on that. I had, I have that Jimmy Tony scene in my scenes here. Uh, so why don't we just, uh, why don't we take a quick break and then we'll start diving into those scenes. All right. Best scenes. So I have, I have a bunch written down here. I have the, the first one I have noted here. I think I have these in sequential order. Uh, I have the card game. You had cited that in our earlier conversation where Jimmy and Pussy and it looked like a bunch of other random people were playing cards and the FBI raids the car hall, uh, very, the card game. Very good scene. I had that as well. Yeah. And it's just, uh, Jimmy, they find the gun on Jimmy and he goes, what's this? He goes, it's a fucking gun. I actually have a quote from this. All right, cool. <laughs> you want to save it or you want to drop it now? I'll say, I'll save it, but it's, it's funny with this scene. All right. The, I, the highlight of the scene for me is Pussy just like so pathetically running away. He looks like I look like when I'm running and playing with my. <laughs> that's what it looks like. It's not. Yeah. It, he, he had no chance. It was, it was, it was actually pretty comical. Mm. What's the scene you have? Um, I have the scene. Um, one of the ones I have, Tony, Christopher, and Paulie, while they're moving the piano when they're having their conversation. Okay. And then you and you hear Paulie talking about like you know the, he talked to somebody with back issues, like who deals with back issues, and he gave Pussy a full workup and he found nothing. Right. Uh, and that's actually the first time we hear, um, nobody knows anything. Yes. Uh, title of this gets thrown in two times uh <laughs> the episode i do have this cited in my quotes yes okay. <laughs> but that's fine we can touch on it now i i'm 100 percent of the time gonna always put that in my quotes when the episode title is cited well it's cited twice here so that yep <laughs> so no nobody truly knows anything and um you, you see because he's starting to you see him starting to worry right yeah, and I I have most of my nitpicks in this episode have to do with pussy, and there there is something I'll I'll save it for that part of the show, but okay. yeah, I have a, I have a nitpick about pussy, uh, specifically in this scene where we see uh, him interacting with Tony, and he t- says he's going to go into a hot tub. Okay, but yeah, good scene. Uh, we, we see a, this is a big big episode for pussy. Uh, one scene I have noted here is the first meeting of this episode with Tony and Vin McKazian, John Hurt's character. Okay. Where he tells them that pussy's wired for sound. I had that as well. That's a, that's a rough scene for Tony. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, this is basically like a brother to him and he finds out that he either is or isn't, uh, wearing a wire to save himself from going to jail and, We'll put Tony and all of his friends in jail in exchange. So it's it's a rough pill to swallow. But, and then kind of Vin explains it to him that it was information from a guy on the force whose wedding he was in. And he says he was selling a lot of heroin to pay for his son's college tuition. So it makes a lot of sense. And you hear him talking. About, I have a nitpick about this. I'm going to bring it up now. Sure. Um, you have him mentioning things. Uh, he's mentioning when... Pussy went to Vegas. He did go to Vegas. So, yes. And, you know, he knew this. Like, how would he know this if it wasn't something? So I don't know how this gets looked past. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we, I got big nitpicks there. And we're, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I'm fighting the urge to just hold it. <laughs> but it really, does, it really is a lot of pussies it causes the uh nitpicks in this one pussy is the center of all my nitpicks with this episode but yeah we'll we'll, we'll hold it um i guess we could just segue 
another scene that I have written down here is the meeting at Pussy's house with Tony and Pussy. Okay, I had that too. I have a quote from that one too. Yeah, yeah. Probably we probably have the same quote. Um, yeah, but it's just he goes to his house to visit him, and you you can tell Pussy knows something's off because Tony keeps telling him like you have friends. Yeah, you and you and that's that's a big don't forget about that scene. Yeah, because in the season one of a uh, season two premiere. Yep, that's a big one. That's that's gonna be uh. That's, but, that's going to be brought up heavily. It's another good scene because it's just like you see the interaction and you see as much as Tony is starting to believe it, that he is, he doesn't want to because like he said to Marquesian in the scene you uh, prior mentioned, I love this man. Yeah. He loves pussy. The yeah. Cat, not the, well, he might love the other one too. It, uh, you know. <laughs> but... <laughs> That, that's you know, and you see the it's it's rough. Tony is it's a rough episode for him. You see his true like pain throughout this whole episode. Absolutely, yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, what's an, what's another one that you had? Um, another one I have is the uh, where is it? The breakfast scene when they're sitting down eating breakfast together. Um, it's the kids him yeah and- yeah and so such a such a 90s scene because i believe they're talking about the bill clinton monica Lewinsky scandal yes and then <laughs> and they, like meta was trying to def- defend it she's talking about uh prostitution is legal in other other places <laughs> and get tony be like you know it's 1990s out there and here it's still 1950 <laughs> Yeah, that was in my quote. <laughs> Excuse me, that was that was in my quotes. He was, you see, that's where you're wrong. Out, out there, it's the 1990s, but in this house, it's 1954. And he's like, he, he points to the window. He's like, 1990, 1954. <laughs> the father I want to be like when my daughter gets older. Let me. Tell you. <laughs> All right, so I, I have two more here. A okay. um, couple more. All right, so one I want to, you know, we got to talk about is uh, Mackenzie's suicide. Yes, I have that. A, just, it's it's tough when you like when you watch it over again and you see like he was arrested at the horror house in a, like one or two scenes before this, so he probably was going to either be suspended from the force or fired completely. What do you think was going to happen to him? Um, I don't think it would have been too bad. I think you know that is. It's frowned upon. I don't think that they really like are gonna, as opposed to other things in the police department that they're gonna get rid of you for. So I thought it would have been a suspension. I thought in his best case scenario, they probably would have been keeping extra eyes on him, so which which probably would have meant that he couldn't uh, be out there in the open giving Tony information as he had been. Exactly. So it would it it wouldn't have been good for him for Tony. And, yeah, and I, I he I think he loved Tony. I think so too, and and you get that from the scene between Tony and um, the madam. Um, yeah, hold on. Yeah, double check. You see, throughout the you see, yeah, like I mean, in most of his scenes, he's kind of just yearning for approval from Tony. You you see him wanting, like you know, hey, can you give me a little bit of a better hello in that scene where he's where he finds out about pussy for the first time. Right. You, you see him like, you know, reaching out. He really respects what Tony thinks about him. Yeah. I think uh, the tough, maybe the toughest part of this scene for me is he's in traffic. He's in a traffic jam and he holds out his badge to the officer so he can bypass the traffic just so he can go kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, t- tough scene. I mean, watching anyone commit suicide is, is, is tough to watch. And this, it was a, uh, really was a good character like he played john hard was great in this he role. was he was he was great great character arc you knew it ended badly and i guess it's this is a uh don't forget about it this is not the last we're gonna see of him in the show no so yeah he'll he'll be back in uh a different form but yeah uh, we'll definitely see john hurt again later i believe that's in season five as well yeah yeah so we'll great episode but yeah, we haven't seen the last of him, even though he did jump off a bridge tragically to his death. Uh, what's another scene that you have? 
Uh, I have a couple. All uh, right, go for it. I'll go with two. I'll use two more just to, just to to keep up. But um, they might be the ones I have. Tony and Jimmy in the basement. Yep, I got that. Um, that scene is just like you know he finds out who the rat is in his family because they knew there was a rat, and they finally figured out who it was. Uh-huh. Well, he figured out who it was, and then brings it to other people's attention. And I had that as a don't forget about me. Um, how it keeps getting spread about what he does. So I remember I watched this first episode. This episode's, I don't know, 22, 23 years old. So I was like 20 years old when I watched this. I'd like to think that I'm, I'm smarter now. That's that's up for debate. But I remember at yes. age 20, re- and I was like, before like they even said anything, just the way Jimmy was talking to Tony, I was like, wow, he's he's a fucking rat. Like, he's, he's, not, he's not good at this at all. He, he didn't hide it well. He was... No. Very clear, as as opposed to others that we find out in the future that are and yeah yeah there there's I mean I'm thinking of one character specifically that we won't get into yes but one who we'll go we'll get into that in season two when we find out about it well not I I think there's a different character one of the captains who becomes a rat and he dies he dies of natural causes and Tony never even knows he's a rat he and he just hides it so well that it's almost like we almost forget that this character was a rat. Yeah. Think, you you really, like, it goes few and far in between when you see him be in there. Yeah, but he just rolls up to his basement. He's like, you better lay low with that safe house money. And he's like, what are we going to do about the dead Colombian in the apartment? He's like saying very specific things. Uh, you you got a problem. I know. Yeah, yeah. Working on it. Working on what? And that, that <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. And, t- and Tony, at this point, just immediately real. I mean, if 20-year-old me immediately knew, then Tony definitely knew. He's just like, oh, yeah, you look good. Um, another one I have is Junior Olivia. Yeah, that's my side. Okay, you, we matched up on our last two. Um, in that scene, you just see Olivia once again. Because you, you talk about Junior being petty. I think she's the real petty one, like very petty. Because Yeah, and it's all because he sold her house. Yeah, he sold her house, and that's what caused her to tell him, to start telling him about everything, and literally play him like a like a marionette doll. Right, and she tells him about the meetings that uh, Ray Curto, Larry Barisi, Johnny Sack. Did Johnny? I don't remember seeing Johnny in Green Grove. Do you? Uh, no, the only the only people I remember seeing in Green Grove are Jimmy. Uh, Raymond and um, Larry Boy. Yeah, because I have this. I have this in nitpicks, but I have it with a question mark next to it because she says about Johnny Sack having his mother there. I don't even know if we see Johnny Sack's mother in the show. I mean, Johnny Sack. Uh, no. I could be wrong, but I, if she is, I don't remember. You see his dad, not his mom. I do remember dad. Okay. So yeah, no, you never see his mom. So I don't. Okay, so we never see her in Green Grove. Yeah, no. Or or in any any capacity. No. Okay. So that yeah, that was like an that was a nitpick, but I had like an asterisk or question mark next to it because I wasn't sure. All right, but yeah, you confirmed that one for me. Um just to glaze over a couple too that I have. Yeah. Tony, Paulie, and Silvio at the Satriales. Yes. Big scene when they figure when Tony's trying to let them know and find out if Pussy was killed. Right. Also, another nitpick with that one. Um, yeah. Uh, the Schmidt scene was great. Yeah, and it was well. That's I have a one of my nitpicks is from the the was it Schmidt's? Is that how you say it? Am I saying it right? Yeah, Schmidt's. That's uh, it's. I think it's uh, Yiddish. Okay. All right. Cool. But yeah, I do have a nitpick from that scene. He, you know, he was. You know, he wanted Pussy to get undressed so we could see if he was wearing a wire. Pussy refused to take his his shirt off, and then he just left. And we're kind of left to wonder. Uh, I, that's everything I got about that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it for me on scenes too. I think we covered yeah most of the important scenes here. A lot of good, a lot of good scenes in this episode. Yeah. All right. So uh, best quote. Uh, the first one I have here is from Chris talking about pussy running away from the FBI. Shit, I had that one too. <laughs> he says, why the fuck would pussy run? I mean, the guy's out of breath calling his dick out to take a leak. <laughs> so, g- good quote there. What's one that you had? 
Um, Tony talking to uh, Kevin Bumpacero. Uh, so your father tells me to take up astronomy in college. He goes, no business. He goes, well, how come he says you keep taking up space? <laughs> yeah, great dad joke. We see a lot of those from Tony. He's great with the dad jokes. And you see, because uh, he's like, oh, don't make me laugh. It hurts too much. <laughs> I like the scene with uh, Tony. He was visiting, I forget her name, the, the director at Green Grove. And the director of Green Grove tells him she's more connected to the world. And Tony goes, which one? This one or Neptune? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good quote, too. Yeah. Um, another one I have uh, is actually with Mikey. Uh, he goes, hey, babe, look what Chucky brought us. And she goes, another kitchen appliance. Whoop fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> I love the dynamic between the Palmises. Uh, which, you know, couple, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. The, these, <laughs> there could have been a show just just of, of their marriage, and meet, I probably would I probably would have watched it. Meet the Palmises. <laughs> um, let me think. I most of my, the other quotes I have here are from nobody knows anything. We we talked about both of those, and then I have the 1954 quote. Um, another one I have here is Junior when they're having the meeting at the Bing after uh, Pussy gets out of jail, and he's just. He get, he get, he was really mad. He goes, "We don't run. It's embarrassing," <laughs> and he just gets angry over the dumbest things. And then he, well, then he gets mad at him again because he goes, he, "They took five dimes off me. Why are you carrying that much cash?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dev. I, I would say uh, Junior is the most quotable character in this show. That'll be bulk of my quotes, especially in season two. Oh, season two, he goes off. Yeah. <laughs> uh. uh Tony, when he's talking to um, Silvio, and Silvio says to him, like, you know, this can't be good. He goes, oh, no, I'm sorry, with Paulie, he goes, I-, I can't I can't believe it, like, my head. And then Tony comes out and says, well, believe it, I've been walking into walls all week. <laughs> it just, you see, it's just like how much this is affecting him. And not because of the fact that he could go away for a while, but the fact that one of his friends could have actually turned on him. Right, right. Yeah, uh, good, good quote there. I think I'm tapped because I we've touched on a few of mine. Yeah, in the discussion. Um, I have I have one last one, and it, if this is true, Livia, you know what I I got to do. I'm the boss. So uh-huh. like, blood or no, I have to. Like you, you see, like he doesn't want to, but he's going to do it anyway because his ego was was damaged, thinking he was the boss. And I think I had this written down here, and I might have accidentally erased it did did livia say what did i say now i yes she did okay and yeah so it's like what did i say now but she knows exactly what she said oh yeah just just more like matt just a master class in deception from her all right uh don't forget about it so i just have one word here i have pussy yeah i i have that and i have jimmy okay yeah yeah so i mean do you have any? I mean, we kind of talked about both of them. Do you have anything else on there, or can we segue into nitpicks because they're I, they're I, my nitpicks as well? Uh, I I think we could segue into nitpicks because there's there's a few. Yeah. First of all, um, at Tony's house, Polly or not Polly, Pussy says, "I'm going to go in the hot tub." And then the scene with Polly, he says, "Heat is bad for his back." Yes. Oh, so fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess th- they have the disadvantage of not being an audience member seeing both of these scenes. But poor, I, I don't know if it was a poor writing choice or if it was meant for us to notice it and have conversations like this. It could be, definitely. Um, another one I have um, for nitpicks, um, the arrest scene. Okay. It looks so... Fi- oh, wait. I forgot. I had one more quote. Oh, go. Yeah. I'll go really quick with it. It's no, it's fine. Goes, we're just playing cards. And, and he goes, believe me, if I if I wanted to break up a card game, I'd have a donut in my mouth, the agent said. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good quote. But that arrest scene just seems so not real. Um, It was... It didn't... It, it lacked authentic, uh, authenticity, I felt. Yeah, because he he kind of like slowly rolls the cue ball on the pool table, and then all of a sudden knows that there's guns under the pool table. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, not not the best uh, arrest scene that we'll see in the show. And then um, my biggest nitpick is the uh, whole informant thing and a bunch of the things that he asked him, like, you know, that, that Marquesian knew about. He wouldn't know if he wasn't uh, an informant. Right. Um, and then also the fact that Pussy didn't take off his, sh- his uh, shirt at the Schwitz. Yeah, I have this. I have this here as, you know, Paulie just kind of relents. He's like, I'm not taking my shirt off. Get the fuck away from me. And Paulie's just like, okay. And that was that was the end of it. I think I think you'd want to do what you need to do to get this information out. I I was you would rip the shirt off. If it was me, I would rip his shirt off just to say we see a scene. I believe it's season three where he he asks Chris if he's wearing a wire and he rips his shirt. Yeah, yeah. Just to fuck with him. But yeah, nobody actually thinks Chris is a rat. But Paulie's just kind of like throwing his dick around. And... Oh, no, I'm talking. I'm I'm actually talking about um, the one between Tony and Christopher. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's because that, he actually does it. Yes. Yes. And um, but yeah, we we do see this with Paulie. So I just, I just think Paulie kind of gave up too easily, and that's not really consistent with the character throughout the show. No, he's he's an unbearable ball breaker. He even... And that. Even um, Debbie, the the madam, says it like she didn't like Paulie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then my other nitpick, you know, just to follow up, keep on pussy here. They, I have, they really just let this go because Jimmy is also fat. That, that's it. Yeah, that's the <laughs> like the, the name that he mentioned. Like he mentioned him by name. What is it? How does them both being fat have anything to do with anything? Yeah, yeah, and Tony actually, he's like, they got the wrong fat fuck. I was like, yeah. okay, that that make you guys are all, most of you guys are all fat fucks. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense that they would just be like, okay, yeah, we're okay. We we shouldn't pursue this any further. Yeah, yeah pussy's clear now. He's fat. He's fat, but not the real fat guy. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's another fat guy who is a rat. We're just gonna, yeah, we'll keep telling him things. Oh. So, friends of ours, I think we talked about this during the week. I, I, lo- I looked. You told me there were none, and I was like, I was like, maybe I'll, maybe I'll find something. Maybe I'll get lucky and find something. No. Did you? No, not so much. But I, I did in my questions, comments, concerns. I do have some, like actor notes here. Did okay. you find? Did you find anything after you said that to me? Uh the only thing I found a little bit on was uh, Mikey Palmisi's wife. Okay. Uh, She's done a couple of things. She hasn't done anything since 2018. But it's just, you know, it really was no real big guest in this episode. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't, yeah, that was kind of an empty category this week. In my questions, comments, concerns, I did cite a few things here. I have John Junta, who plays Kevin Bopatero in this episode. Okay. And we, t- we talk about, you know, actors with, who are only in this are kind of one and dones or two or threes and dones. And this was his only acting credit. Okay. Yeah. So never so, again did he act. I was hoping Dr. Dr. Moppenglow was going to be somebody special, but I was hope I did look him up as well. And citing that I don't remember what I read. It was, it was nothing that made me go to my laptop. No, but yeah. Michelle Santa Perito is her name. Okay. Uh, I did want to cite uh, Al Sapienza, uh, Mikey Palmis. I okay. was I, I was looking him up, and you know, spoiler: if you're listening to this podcast, you know we, we don't have much time with with this guy left. Um, two hundred eighty five IMDb credits. Does he really? Yeah, my man is working, and I do remember seeing him in a bunch of things after this. He's he had an arc on House of Cards. He was on a couple of episodes of Gotham. He was in a couple episodes of Twenty Four. Do you remember the show Brotherhood? Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. Uh, he the uh, Irish the the Irish uh, mafia, not the yep. mafia, but the the rebellion kind of thing. Yeah, that was it. Was on Showtime. It lasted like three seasons. It was with Jason Isaacs and Jason Clark, and uh, Jason Clark's character was a politician in Rhode Island, and Jason Isaacs was his brother, and he played like a mob boss. So he was also a mob boss in. Um... Blue Bloods, the show I watched, we were okay. talking about. He was in that as well. Um, yeah, I'm looking at his stuff right now. He's got a lot coming out too. Yeah, yeah, he's he's 
been, I mean, not a household name. I, I would imagine anyone who doesn't watch Sopranos probably doesn't know. I know, I just kind of know who he is from, you know, he, seeing him around. He's definitely in the, oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. And he shows up. I remember, yeah, he was really good in House of Cards. And I was like, okay, it's Mikey Palmese. He's, he's, he's still alive. Yeah, but he, he was in so much, he had so much. Yeah. And also, Joseph Baldelucho Jr., who plays Jimmy, we're not going to have too much of him left. He stayed, he was um, a prop master on the on the show and he's, he's been the prop master in 29 projects he stayed on the show until the end of season three really yeah yeah so i, th- I thought that was interesting uh, wow and do you know do you remember you watched the the night of right the night of that was a limited series uh with john Turturro, uh riz ahmed yes and yes. yeah My- michael kenneth williams yes yeah it was actually ironically the John Turturro part was supposed to be James Gandolfini, and then he died. Really? Yeah, yeah. There's actually I, I you don't quote me, but you might be able to find YouTube footage of Gandolfini auditioning. Oh wow! But okay. yeah, he's actually in the in the cre- if you look on the IMDb for the night of Gandolfini's in there, and he had to be replaced by Turturro because he unfortunately passed while they were filming. Let me tell you, I really. Uh... I wonder what he'd be doing right now if he was still alive. Yeah, we were. I mean, we thank thankfully we got what we got this role and all the all the great movies he was in. But yeah, what could have been? And they could have, yeah. I don't know because a lot of people are saying that he. Did, well, we'll get we'll get into that when we get to that episode. Sure. <laughs> all all right. right. Uh, trivia. Yeah, you or me first. I will go first. I had this one from last week, so All right, I cool, yeah. Through that week, so hit me. All right, um, the Sopranos has won many Emmys, as you know. Yes. Um, but there is one person to not win an Emmy on the show. Okay. Well, there's a couple that didn't win it, but out of the list I'm going to give you, one of them did not. Okay. Was it Edie Falco? Okay. Michael Imperioli. Okay. Drea Di Matteo. Okay. Joey Pantaleone. Or Lorraine Bracco. Okay, I know it's not Imperioli. I know it's not. Uh, I know it's not Joey Pants. I know it. I'm fuck. I know it's not. I'm pretty sure it's not Edie Falco. I'm gonna go Drea Demetrio. She actually won one for season four. It was Lorraine Bracco. Fuck, really? Melfi yep. never got one. No, she never won an award for the show. Shit. Okay. So you got me there. Uh, Imperioli, he won for season five. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. And Joe Pantaleon, I think, won for season four. Yep. Yep. I, I knew I knew he definitely had one. All right. Yeah, Dre Di Matteo won for season four, too. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. She was really, I mean, her, her performance in four and five, that's when she really steps it up. Your turn, buddy. All right. So I got a John Hurd themed question because this was his last episode. Okay. So he, he, we, you know, we don't need to go down his career too far because we already did a, a deep dive a couple episodes ago. Okay. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some movies. He was in other projects with characters from The Sopranos. I'm going to give you, let me say, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six? All right. I'm going to give you six movies. One of them is fake. All right. I know, I know sometimes I do these and it's like a trick question, like this actor. This movie exists, but this actor wasn't in it. One okay. of these, one of these movies is fake. So you tell me which one. All right. So John Hurd was in Snake Eyes, which also had Michael Raspoli in it, who played Jackie. Okay. John Hurd was in Radio Flyer, which also had Lorraine Bracco, Doctor Melfi. He was in Big, which also had Robert Loja, Feech. He was in Awakenings which had uh, Vincent Pastore in a small role. He was in Animal Factory with Steve Buscemi, or he was in Alliance with Frank Vincent. Which of these is fake? (laughs) Jeez. Yeah, one of these movies just doesn't exist. I made it up. Really? Yeah. 
<laughs> the f- five of them are real. I'm going to have to go with the only one that sounds fake to me because I've seen most of these movies is Animal Factory. Okay, I, yeah, I figured you were going to say Animal Factory or Alliance. Um, yeah. Animal Factory is a real movie. And it, <sighs> yeah, it was directed by Steve Buscemi. I've never even heard of this movie until I was digging up uh, John Hurd's filmography. It was Alliance? It, Alliance with Frank Vincent is not a real movie. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm sure it eventually would have been if he, if he uh, hadn't passed. Oh, another one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we we got a lot out of his career too. So Yeah, that was what my two choices were Animal Factory and Alliance. <laughs> yep. I thought I might throw you well, yeah, I made it the last one because usually I, I put the I put the correct answer in the middle, but I was like, I'll put this one at the end. Maybe I'll okay. throw him off. <laughs> All right. So uh mo- moments of truth here. Who's your MVP of this episode? Uh, I- I didn't want to give it to him again, but he, he really dominated the episode because kind of like a no-brainer, Tony. Okay. Um, I thought it was a no-brainer. That's why I went edgy on this one. But I'll tell you mine in a minute. Uh, why Tony? What, what stood out? There's so many different aspects of him as a character in this episode. So many good scenes. You have him, the the basically the hurt friend. You have him as the the fearless leader you have him as the hothead you have him as the everyday dad there's so many different aspects of him in this episode that makes it hard to choose anybody else okay all right well i did choose someone else even though i totally i i had tony and then i i scratched off i said all right, I, I think I've given tony the award too many times so let's just let's pull like a Giannis here or a james harden and Put LeBron to the side. There you go. And I, I gave it to Paulie for this episode. I thought, I, what, uh, what what made you pick him? I just he was so even killed in the scene where uh, Tony's telling him about pussy, and this isn't like you know wh- what are we getting for dinner. This is we need, we're gonna kill one of our best friends and essentially our brothers. And Paulie was just so level headed in that scene. And he's like, I'll do it. You know, you waited a long time for the stripes. This is one of the perks. And even in the scene where Tony's like grabbing him by the shirt, throwing him up against the wall, like you tell me what happened. You know, he didn't he didn't lose his cool. Not once. You see, he's he's very like you said, even keel, which is very odd for him. Yeah, yeah. We're I mean we're we're gonna see a lot throughout the show where he, you know, he doesn't necessarily keep his cool, but yeah, he's 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 really uh, he he handles the situation really well in this episode. So that's why I, maybe like maybe I'm trying to be a little edgy with this pick, but I like it. I don't I don't dislike that pick. Actually, he was really good in this episode. Okay, uh, how many boxes is Edie for this I, one? Oh, after that last debacle, it, it, this one got eight point five for me. Okay, I'm a little lower. I just went an even eight. Okay, so yeah, we're we're close on that one. But it was a much better episode than the last episode, which the last episode really gave us nothing as far as story. Um, it was like we talked about a side plot in a game that has nothing to do with the outcome. It did give us massive genius. So, I mean, it's not nothing. <laughs> One uh, of the, what... <laughs> I thought I'd never have to hear his name again. Damn it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that might be just a running segment. Like, say something nice about Massive Genius. <laughs> like, not trying to say something nice about Toby. <laughs> uh, where's uh, where's some place people can follow you? Uh, you can follow me at Twinkie Seven Thirty in uh, on Instagram. Um, also, if you want to follow a couple of guys just you know abusing each other and playing some video games, um, we have our. Uh, our page arcade underscore wars at Instagram. Uh, a lot of good uh, events we do, and we have fun. And uh, that's that's all for me. How about you, Dave? Uh, yeah, let me just note. I, I was I was following your competition over the weekend on Arcade Wars. Looked like you guys were having a good time. Yeah, I was the theme of the uh, Halloween party. Nice. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked it look, it looked like a lot of fun. Um, you could follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DDEM2000. You can also follow this show at It's the Jacket Pod on Instagram. 
And if you want to talk Sopranos with Anthony or myself or a bunch of other people, or if you want to talk about another show or movie that you like, you can join the movie and television talk Facebook group. Just type that into a group search and wear the red cover photo. Uh, what is the episode next week, sir? Uh, the episode that we have next week will be, give me one second. I have it written down. Let me just turn my page. Come on. Starts with an I. I, I know, but my, uh, I don't have it down. <laughs> is look on the, on the page. <laughs> so we got Isabella next week. Oh, okay. Yes. This was a fun episode. I already watched it. There's a yeah. I watched it uh, the other. I watched it yeah, before football on Sunday. So yeah, yeah, really good episode. A lot of major shit goes down in this one. So looking forward to talking about it with you. Very well. All right, my friend. Good, good talk as always. I will talk to you next week, sir. Sounds good. Thanks for listening, everybody.